Alright, we're here on Bellship Message from map number one, ladies and gentlemen, and spawning in the bottom right-hand corner as the red Protoss player representing Team Dignitas. We have Zhu Shijie, it is Dignitas Dream. And he is going up against the blue Protoss player in the top left corner representing FM Esports. A stalwart of the UK community, some of you might know him as a caster. Let's see how he handles the hot seat. It is Pewie. Now, Pewie, of course, was casting Dreamhack as well this weekend. He was one of the community streams, so that's where some of you may have seen him, may have heard his name. But yeah, both players opening up at the moment, which is a good thing. Because if you're not getting a gateway in your base, you're doing something very crazy in game number one of a best of three. And the probe just on a little bit of a rally point out here from Huey to double check that there isn't a sneaky early pylon going down in his natural expansion. Just being a little bit safe here. Of course, theoretically, you could get a probe sneaking in and maybe putting something in the southern part of the base or even in this corner here. But um, you would have to send one out pretty early to kind of slip that under someone's nose. And we see two extractors coming down for a dream. Compared to just the one assimilator for Pewee here, but he's just going to be putting two on each. So not too much different here at the beginning of this game. Now talking of base in a base, there's, there's not a good time to not do that. Um, just take a look at, say, Huck versus Stardust yesterday. Oh my um, god, that was, a cr that was insane. That was probably one of the best PvPs, or maybe not best, one of the most entertaining, entertaining. PvPs. Yeah, I've seen. The only game that's even come close to that is a game I put up on my YouTube channel a couple of days ago, TLO versus Daishi. If anyone wants to watch a hilarious best of three series after this cast, go and check that, that out. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Game one, you will just laugh. I, For game number two, I ended up just laughing for about 30 seconds straight. I couldn't compose myself. It was that now, random. Does it beat Mini Razor Arthur? Um, it's very difficult to beat Mini Razor Arthur, mate. <laughs> okay, it's difficult to beat that. It was different. I'll give it that much. <laughs> but anyway, back to this game. Oh, yeah, check that out as well. Mini Razor versus Arthur. I think Nick specifically put that one bot on YouTube before any of the other ones because it was that ridiculous. Um, but we have now got both sides scouting each other with probes so far. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Two gateways for each player. If we take a look at the units that are currently out on the map, we do have a slightly earlier Stalker for Pewie, and he's getting two more. So going up to those three Stalkers, and Dream, in the meantime, will be the first player on the field with that Mothership Core. Yeah, quite a lot sooner out, actually. Pewie hasn't started his yet. Going for that two Stalker pressure, most likely. Um, well, two Gate Stalker production, anyway. He's already got one on the field. Can come and poke around a bit, try and be a bit of a nuisance. But Dream, he's got his two Gates out as well. So near identical openings. The third one on its way for Dream, though. Pewie? He's just sitting there, um, getting down, well, not too much. And these Stalkers, they're basically rallied out of the base right now, and they're leaving just as the Mothership Corps is about to arrive. The final Stalker is being rallied out. He's getting all the way to the ramp, and now Pewie sees that the Mothership Corps is incoming. So uh, let's see if... Yes, he does actually turn that around. I think this Mothership Corps will be able to get at least one probe. Managing potentially to pick up a second one as well. Needs to be careful. He really needs to get the heck out of dodge right now. It looks like he is going to be using that mass recall. Might have been able to kill a third one. But that's okay right now. Number of workers killed two to one. And of course, that may not seem like much, but with that proxy pylon going down there, Puri actually has supply blocked Dream momentarily. And actually, I say momentarily, Dream doesn't have another pylon in production. This is a huge supply block. Yeah, that's massive indeed. 36 out of 34. Now just starting that pylon. And uh, Pewey, I don't think, knows about the supply block specifically, but he is in a pretty good position right now. He almost picks off a Stalker as it goes up the ramp. We're going to need to see some clutch force fields here from Dream. Yeah, he's going to have to have a bit of a miracle here. He does have the third gate up. Pewey's only got two at the moment, but both players are trying to secure their natural. Um, Dream doesn't want to have to cancel this because he wants to try and keep it up for as long as possible. I don't think he's going to have a choice in the matter, all because of that supply block. I cannot emphasize how critically important to this game that supply block was. It really put Pewey in a commanding lead just because Dream couldn't produce anything for about 45 seconds. And I think Pewey knows how good a position he's in now because he's got his natural nexus down. So um, he needs to stay calm, he needs to stay cool, he needs to stay collected right now. And in the long run, he'll be able to very, very quickly um, start squeezing out an economic lead over Dream. If we take a look at the income, they're about equal at the moment with Pewey having maybe a slight edge 
but that's only going to get bigger with time. Huey supply block, but only for a couple of seconds here. And oh no, this is not what he wanted. He doesn't need these stalkers caught in the middle of the map. Decent poison on dream, and a third stalker is going to go down for Huey as well. Big hit, big, big hit. Huey does have the mothership core coming in, but unfortunately, it does not have enough energy. And that means no folk, no recharge. These stalkers are still bullying their way forward. And Huey being forced back into corner. Nice little time walk going down there. The sentry gets focused down. The set is going to take 95, 96, 97. And Huey's mothership board goes down. This counterattack might potentially prove to be too much here. Both sides have lost their mothership cores. A lot more stalkers coming out here from the dream. But Huey has the immortal coming down. This game is still very close, ladies and gentlemen, because we've got an expansion for Huey that hasn't been taken apart. And Dream has managed to uh, rebuild his but significantly slow. If we take a look at the worker count, it's 28 to 26 in Pewee's favor. So this game, what, very, very close. Absolute knife edge as Dream now completes his natural expansion again. How, how did that happen? How, what, why? Uh, after seeing Hyun versus Ghost User, where Ghost User lost all of his hatcheries and then came back, how, is, how has Dream done this after that huge supply block? How, how, Drosa? Uh, it's because, unfortunately, the Mothership Court didn't have that extra 20 energy to put the Photon Overcharge down early. Had he did, Puey would have held that off easy peasy. Dream wouldn't have been able to get in a word edgeways, and all would be fine. As it stood, Dream just somehow hit a ridiculously good timing with his own Mothership Core and those Stalkers, picking apart Puey's Mothership Core before he can get that Photon Overcharge down, and then killing off those units before Puey could get the Immortal. It just felt like the perfect timing. There was a 20 second window where Puey was vulnerable and Dream took complete advantage of it. And now we're back to a game where either side can take it. Yeah, the work account 33 to 32, but Dream is starting to tech up quicker than Puey is. The robotics bait is getting constructed. We've got the Mothership Core being remade there for both sides. In terms of upgrades, neither player getting anything yet, but Dream does have his forge on its way down too. The robotics base slightly behind for Puey, but they're both teching up into Colossi, and this is shaping up to be a very fun PvP. It is indeed. We're going to be going into the late game here. Uh, 11 minute 30 second mark, both sides going for those Colossi, like you mentioned. Uh, Puey a little bit behind on that robotics bay. Not going to matter too much though. In the meantime, we see the War Prism coming in with Immortals from Dream. So we are going to see an Immortal drop. Let's see how quickly it can get some damage done. The two probes only getting killed off right now, but he's trying to pick off those pylons that could power the rest of these buildings. See, <gasps> if he gets a cybernetic score, that could be huge, but no, it looks like... Yeah, I think he might actually do it at this stage. Puey is preoccupied elsewhere. Yeah, this is Dream sacrificing to Munitin to get that cybernetic score. Um, but now he's actually... Wow, he's got the pylon instead, not focusing down the cyber core. If he gets that as well as that pylon, the doctor for Puey has gone to zero. One more shot, he gets it! Massive loss there. The War Prism has got to get out. does manage to escape. My goodness, that was a big hit in terms of that double immortal drop. So, total number of units that Puey can now summon out onto the field, ladies and gentlemen, is zero. And Dream manages to sneak ahead in this game through that excellent use of the War Prism and the Double Immortal drop. He has Colossi coming out. He has Extended Thermal Lands being researched right now. He's got his Twilight Council coming. Three more gateways coming down as well to potentially fend off any counterattack that Puey has. And if Puey doesn't counterattack, well, Dream, he's just going to be able to mack her up and say, look, I just got an advantage going into the late game here. So, um... Really tough position for Huey to be in right now. The immortal drop That's is still continuing. Start. Yeah, the immortal drop is still continuing. And the other thing as well is actually it wasn't all like rainbows and butterflies for Dream because he did sacrifice a lot of units to get that immortal drop to work. And therefore, True. his gateway force pretty much gone. He's only got four zealots down, those two immortals and two colossi. Whereas Huey still has the stalkers out. That's a nice little advantage for him. It's not huge but it may be the saving grace to give him a chance to come back into this game. The issue is, um, Dream now has six gates versus Pewee's three. So even though Dream has a much smaller army, you correctly point out that there just aren't any gateway units there. By the time Pewee marches across the map, he will have those units there because he's gone up to six gateways. And I feel like um, that's something that's allowed Dream in this particular case to sort of keep ahead of his opponent. He's just going to be moving towards a third base location now to pick apart the forward pylon that's there. He currently leads only by about 10 supply, guys, so it's still pretty close. 
48 to 45, but his tech is just a little bit earlier than Pewie's, and because of that uh, double Immortal Drop picking off those pylons, um, his high tech units will be able to come out a lot sooner than Pewie's as well. Yeah, and the Colossus count is actually getting stupidly high at the moment for Dream. He's about to get his fourth out, and he's still sitting there with the Immortals. Things are pretty balanced, but look at the worker count. A three probe advantage for Dream may not seem like much, but with that third base on its way, can quickly escalate. Oh, Dream's got to be careful here. He does not want to lose those two Colossi. Gets a couple of shots off, but Pui posturing for a push. He is indeed, and I think Dream knows he has to get his army together, and he has to stabilize right now because Pui really wants to get some damage done. Indeed, he perhaps feels he needs to get some damage done with this push here. You can see the forward pylons coming down. Statement of intent. And he is in, Maddles. Uh, the Valley of Death right now. This Valley of Death. I have Just about so surviving. Yep. The oh moment God. overlooked. Oh my goodness, Dream. Oh He's God. getting such better Colossus hits off. That's the big thing. The Zealots of Dream soaking up most of the damage. Dream annihilating That's that force.